Hi. Right now you're looking at my main lathe and drill press that I have here in my small home garden shed workshop. Now these are pretty standard machines. They're okay. They're import machines. Um, I do have others that aren't, but these are my main working tools in this workshop. And uh, this video is because I've just converted them both to three phase, which has proven to be or will prove to be, I think, a significant uh, step up in terms of their functionality. So we'll just take a look at the setup. This will be the first of two videos. In this video I'm just going to show you what they are. Um, and in the second video it will be more of a kind of slideshow video in which I'll show you how, how I did it. So we'll look at the, the actual uh, lathe first. It's, um, as I said, it's a standard import lathe. 750 millimeters between centers. It's not bad, you know, it does the job. Um, I've used it lots for lots of things. But during the summer, it had a, a motor burnout. So instead of replacing the motor, um, I decided to upgrade it with a more powerful 1.1 kilowatt three phase motor. And that's down in at the back here. Uh, yeah, you can, you're just looking at the motor now. Don't know if, how well that will show up in the video, but never mind. Um, and, you know, I've had to rebuild all the motor housing and all this is new as well because I had to reconfigure the whole thing to accept a bigger motor. It was only three quarters of a kilowatt before, um, so it's it's more powerful now. Um, there's not a great deal else to say about it. Oh yeah, I, I, um, I upgraded the drive train as well, well the, the belt drive, um, changed the pulleys and put on this link belt which is a much more robust drive system than it had before. It just had a very skinny V-belt on it before so there are bigger pulleys and a bigger belt and a one-to-one -one drive ratio because it's variable speed control that we now have with the three-phase motor. Well we always, they always did have variable speed but um, uh, the, for this motor um, it was recommended to me that one-to-one -one is totally appropriate. So now just looking at the, the supply, the, the actual uh, power uh, supply, um, you'll see here we have the inverter, Mitsubishi inverter, that's quite a good quality one. And there is the, the external uh, speed control station. It's supplied by Newton Tesla, who also uh, supplied the inverter and gave me lots of good advice about this whole setup. And you'll see that it's got a standard start and stop button. It's got a forward and reverse selector. It's got a run and jog selector and it's got a variable speed control. Um, attached to that, we have a three phase plug. And in that is plugged the in the the plug for the lathe. Uh, there is no need to have two inverters. All you need is an external uh, three-phase plug, and then you can have plugs for each machine, and you just swap them over, which is good because you only want to be running one machine at a time. It would, wouldn't work otherwise, and it would be a crazy thing to do anyway. So basically, the lathe's plugged in now and set up ready to go. So its speed control is turned right down. And we'll just start her up. And uh, you'll see that's a nice slow speed. I haven't measured that speed, but you know, we'll just increase it. So it's pretty fast. I should do a speed check on this at some point, but there's no rush. And you'll see that's the, what you've just seen there is the whole speed range of the lay. So we'll just stop it and uh, put it in reverse just to let you see start it up again in reverse and there we go spindle turning in a backwards direction stop it again select jog instead of run and using the start button we just jog it like that remember it's in reverse still and it's jogging in reverse so there we go basically that's the lathe and that's the the speed control setup so we'll just switch it off at the supply, unplug the lathe, and plug in the drill. Okay. So the drill. The drill motor burnt out 
just as I was boring out the motor mount plate for the lathe. Fortunately I had just finished the job um, and uh, and the motor and the drill burned out. Now say boring, I was using this device here which is a converted SIG X1 micro mill which is the subject of another video and it's powered by a flat belt there's the flat belt hanging there from the, the, the chuck of the lathe. Um, the reason that it burnt out I think is not because there was anything wrong with the milling setup but because the milling setup is really quite small scale um, and I was only able to take very light cuts um, otherwise I'd have ended up with the flat belt slipping. It's not unusual for flat belt to slip under load um, and in some ways it can act as a bit of a safety mechanism but what it meant in effect was very light cuts therefore very many cuts therefore having to switch the drill press on and off many many times in succession and that apparently I'm told is a vulnerability to single phase motors they do not like being switched on and off at that degree of frequency that may well be what's, what's done it and you'll see there that the the milling table from that Sieg mill is still on the drill press. It's a very handy attachment for the drill press anyway, an XY table, just to line things up before you even drill them, uh, not, just, not just for milling. So let's have a closer look. Again, now the drill's plugged in, we'll put it into, back onto forward, put it to run, and we'll start her up. Now, This is the lowest speed that this drill can now deliver on um, this variable speed control. It's significantly lower than it was before because what we've got is the lowest setting on the pulleys here um, combined with the, the variable speed being turned right down to minimum. So that lowest setting was previously 160 RPM. With it turned down to minimum on the variable speed control, this is now going at 18 RPM. It's incredibly slow, but despite that, it's got an enormous amount of torque. I mean, there's just no way that you're going to stop that. It's irresistibly powerful torque there. And um, apparently a lot of people um, are under the impression that with inverters, three-phase motors don't deliver torque at low speed. They don't deliver much torque at low speed. Apparently with a decent quality inverter that is no longer the case and an up-to-date inverter will have be able to provide high torque um, even at speeds like this. So what we'll do is just have another play with the speed control. Whoops. Remember the drill's on its lowest speed setting at the moment. So here we go. I can feel the ground vibrating, the floor of the, the workshop vibrating as I turn the speed up there, it feels quite powerful. So that gives you a, a kind of idea. So we could get more than 3000 RPM out of it now because that was the maximum speed before but this motor, will, this motor has a, a faster spindle speed than the existing one did so when it's maxed out it will go really fast. But um, we'll, we won't go through all the pulley belt changes, there's no point. Um, you get the idea. And we've got the same uh, kind of run-jog uh, capability that, that the drill press had. And we're jogging it forward. Okay. Put it back on to run again. And uh, obviously it'll reverse as well. Now you'll notice that I put on a, a new keyless chuck. Just thought that was a nice addition. Uh, given that we're doing talking about upgrade here, we may as well we may as well give it a bit of uh, bling as well. And then there's this, which is a digital, vertical digital readout, which is very nice. Um, as soon as you touch the quill, uh, the display activates and shows you how, how deep you're going. Um, you can switch it off, but if you don't switch it off, it switches itself off after a period of inactivity. Um, you can change it from millimetres to imperial and back to metric again. Um, it's got an absolute setting and it can be zeroed at any point. So it's quite a nice addition to the drill and kind of goes with the, the overall sense of having upgraded the machine. Um, the only other thing that I'm planning to do to these two machines is to put uh, digital tachometers on them. There was one on the lathe but unfortunately I fried the 
the control circuitry when I was fiddling about with it. Um, I've ordered two, one for each machine from eBay. On my, this is my second attempt to get these things delivered and they just haven't pitched up and now the second attempt has passed its deadline as well. So I've been on to eBay asking them what's going on. So I didn't want to wait forever before I made this video because I was quite keen to make it. And, yeah, so I decided not to, to wait until the tachometer's on. I think that fitting the tachometer to the drill press without um, uh, messing around with the, you know, interfering with the, the ability to change belts is actually um, is going to be a little bit tricky. Doable, I think, but tricky. Um, because probably going to have to take the, put the, the magnet for the Hall effect sensor somewhere on the, the, the front pulley. Um, and where exactly to put it and then have the sensor lined up to it without getting in the way of the belts could be a wee bit of a challenge. Oh, one other thing about the drill that I forgot to say is that some people when they're con converting drills to three phase is they'll take out the central jack, jack shaft and then invert the back pulley cone to, to give it a, a more straightforward direct one belt drive system. Now, appealing as that is, um, I spoke to Newton Tesla about this and uh, was told that it's better to leave that jack shaft in because you get a lot of mechanical advantage from the, having that jack shaft in in terms of uh, changing uh, speed ranges that you would lose if you take the jack shaft out. And one of the main reasons for that is that three phase motors aren't terribly bad for overheating. Um, it's not a big problem with them, but they can overheat at lower speeds and if you're running this, the, the motor at a very low speed for an extended period of time there is a danger it can overheat because uh, the fan isn't going very fast. So if you only have one pulley there you're, you're, you're limiting the, the control you have over the motor speed whereas if you keep that central uh, uh, pulley, uh, jack, jack shaft pulley then you can get lower quill speeds without the motor going quite so slowly um, and therefore the risk of overheating is l reduced. So I hope you've found this interesting and maybe some of you will find it useful if you feel um, attracted to the idea of uh, converting your single phase machines to three phase. I'd certainly recommend it. It costs a bit, it's not cheap, but uh, I think what we've got here as a result is uh, two machines of much better quality than they were before. Uh, so I'll uh, post the, the other video of how I put it all together uh, in due course. Thank you very much. Bye.